Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with Developer University. For more of my training videos for beginners, please visit me at devu.com. In this lesson, we're going to talk about arrays, and I'm going to start by making a case for why you need arrays in the first place. So often, you're going to need to work with several related variable values, but how do you work with multiple variables and kind of treat them all as if they're part of the same group? Uh, well, let me show you how not to do it. You can see an example of that on screen. First of all, I've taken the liberty of creating a project called Understanding Arrays. So make sure you catch up with me, create a new console window application, and uh, you can kind of just follow along. You don't need to type this part in. It's wrong anyway, okay. So you can see what I've done here. I need to keep track of five numbers and I need these numbers to be related to each other. So without any better tools in my toolbox, I might just create something called number one, number two, number three, number four, and give them each a value. And now I wanna find which variable holds the value of 16. I'd love to be able to loop through them like we learned about previously to find which of the values hold number 16, but I can't really do that. I'm forced to create an if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else, if kind of structure, uh, as you can see here below, in order to find ultimately find which variable has the value of 16 inside of it. So this is not the right way to go about working with multiple values that are somehow related and you want to treat them as a group. There's a better way, and that, as you might assume, would be with arrays. So let me comment all of this out. And, you know, previously I talked about a variable as being a bucket in the computer's memory that will hold some value. But let's let's expand our, our thinking about this for just a moment and talk about an array. Think of an array as like a bucket or maybe even better, a tackle box. Have you ever seen one of those? If you go fishing, there's a lot of little compartments inside of it. And each one of those little compartments can hold something, all right, usually a little worm or whatever the case might be. Well, what if we were to use that instead of a bucket? What if we were to put values in each of those little tray areas inside of the tackle box and store that up in memory? And then whenever we needed a value out of that tackle box, we just need to take it and look through and find the particular compartment with what we're looking for in order to work with it. That's kind of the idea of an array, at least if you want to overextend the bucket analogy, okay? Um, so another way to think of an array, it's kind of a sequence of data, a collection of data, although I'm hesitant to use those specific terms because they have very specific meanings in .NET. Uh, so think of it in a very general sense. You have a collection of data you want to keep together. How do you do it? Well, one of the ways you can do that is with an array. So let's do this. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and create my first array here. I want you to follow along. And notice that I'm using square brackets. I'm not using curly braces, all right, when I'm, when I'm working here. So... All right. So first of all, you'll uh, let's take a look at the declaration of our array called numbers. It is an array of integers. In other words, there are going to be multiple integers all collected under the same umbrella named numbers. And you can see that not only am I creating uh, the the declaration for this array. I'm also using an equal new int five. Okay, some of this, like the equal and the new part, we're going to talk about what that really means a little bit later. But for now, just accept it as how you go about creating an array. All right. 
And then notice next to that I have int and then inside of that the square brackets I have the number 5. So that's how many elements that I want inside of my new array. I want a new array of integers that can hold 5, five values, 5 integers inside of them. Next what I do is I begin to access each element of the array and put a value inside of that element of the array. So here's the first element of the array, the second element of the array, remember we're zero based. Here's the fourth element of the array and the fifth element of the array. Five elements inside of the array just like we defined here in line number 31. Now what if we wanted to access the value inside of one of the elements of the array. Uh, well, I would do something like this. So Console.WriteLine, obviously. Now, what if I wanted to get to and print out the value that's in the second element of the array? Well, then I would use the correct index of the array to access that element. So, here, here's numbers. And I want the second element, which means I'm going to use the index 1. So I'm going to index into that array to get to the correct element. So in this case, the second element is at index number 1. All right, and I can print that off the screen. And let me do a read line here, like so. And we can quickly run the application. And you can see that we are printing to screen the number 8, which in fact is the second element of our array. All right. Now the other thing that we can do is actually determine how many items are in the array by looking at the length property of the array itself. So console.writeLine, and I'll just go numbers.length, all right. And so let's see what that will output. In fact, let me go ahead and comment that out and run the application. So you can see that we're able to programmatically determine how many items are in the array by using the length property of the array. All right, there's five elements inside the array. Great. Now, what were to happen if we were to attempt to, um, to insert data into another item, uh, a sixth element of the array? What do you suppose would happen here? Well, we'll try it and we'll run the application and you'll see that we get an exception an index out of range exception was unhandled in other words uh, we are outside of the boundary of the space that we defined inside of our array uh, we're trying to access compartments that were never created in the computer's memory inside of our little tackle box okay so in order to remedy this we can either redefine our array at the time of declaration that we need actually six items or we can go ahead and we can change uh, at runtime the number of items in our array it's a little bit of an advanced topic um, I don't want to talk about um, how you would go about doing that but it is possible uh, to do it programmatically at runtime all right so let's move on from there and let's talk about maybe a simpler approach to creating new arrays and that is to not only declare the array but then also initialize its values at the time of declaration so let me comment out everything i have here and we'll do this Now instead of giving it a specific size, we're going to let the compiler figure it out on its own because we're just going to start typing in the values of the elements that should be stored inside of our array. Now in this case, I can create it or just put all the items in there I want to put in there and I can trust that the new array that will be created in memory will be able to hold all, what, six items this time, right? Okay, let me comment that out. And we've been working specifically with integers, but what if we were to work with strings? How would we go about doing that? Well, same sort of idea here. In this case, we want to give it a number of literal strings.
like so, okay? And so let me move this over a little bit. You can see that we are able to create an array of strings. Uh, we don't have to declare up front how many elements we want in our new array. We'll let the compiler figure that out. It will create four items. Now, there's a number of different ways that we can um, that we can loop through to access each of the items in our array. Let me show you two ways, and uh, one of them is going to be what you're already familiar with, the for loop, right? So I'm going to go for, tab, tab. And so we'll start with an integer i equals zero. And now let's do this. Instead, let's go names.length, right? And then inside of here, we'll go, let's do this, console dot right line and we'll go names and then what do you suppose we'll put in the middle here we'll use the value i right so what we're going to do is start at zero and continue iterating through until we reach the length of our array and then we'll stop and jump out uh, of of our array but until then we'll do a console.reline here and you can see that this will allow us to print out all four items inside of our array to the console window. Great. Now, there's a lot of management of this I here, but there's an easier way to go about this. Let me comment this out real quick. I'm going to show you a second style of iteration statement. So uh, in this case, we'll just do this. We'll do for each. And I'll go ahead and use the code snippet. I'll just go tab, tab. So for each string name in names, all right, and I've made up the term name as singular, and names is actually what we called our, our array, right? So now I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard twice, and I'll just do console.writeline name. And let's go console.readline. What this will do is it allow us to essentially loop through every single name in our array of names. And for each item, it will copy the current element into this temporary variable called name of type string. And then we can use that to do whatever we want. In this case, we're just going to print it off the screen. See how much easier that is? But we can use either technique in order to iterate through our sequence of data. Very neat. All right, now let me show you one last thing you can do. Uh, it'll be pretty powerful stuff. Um, and we can create uh, arrays of different things, right? So what if we wanted to create an array? What if we wanted to take a string and reverse the string, okay? How would we go about taking, for example, the name Bob Tabor and reversing that to what? Um, robot. Um, Bob, I guess. <laughs> how would I convert? The, how how would I change that? Well, what we can do is take a string and convert it into an array of individual characters. Once we have an array of individual characters, we can then say, "Go ahead and reverse the order of those items so that the last becomes first and the first becomes last." All right. So let's do this. I'm gonna I'm going to uh, create a string called Zig, and it's going to contain one of my favorite speakers quotes that I have uh, kind of patterned my life after. You can get what you want out of life if you help enough other people get what they want. All right. Now that's a very, very long line of code. So what I would probably do is I would try to chop this up into multiple lines of code. And we said this before that you can do something like this in C sharp. All I'm doing is going to just break it in half and use this concatenation operator, right? To kind of marry the first string and the second string together. So that's all one really one line of code. So now that I have this, what I want to do is create a, uh, a an array of characters. So I'm going to use the char keyword, which is the data type char, meaning I want one character, but I'm going to create an array of characters called um, we'll call it char array. All right. I'm going to take this zig string and I'm going to call a helper method on it called 
to char array. So every um, every data type has some helper methods that are built into it by the .NET framework. And what this will simply do is take a long string and we'll split it up into individual characters and put those into an array of characters. Now that we have our our um, statement here in an array of individual characters, I can do something like this. I'll call array dot reverse, and I'm going to pass in the character array. And then finally, what I want to do is we'll do a for each tab tab for each char, and I'll just call this a Zig Ziglar char in my char array console dot right, not right line, but just right, and the zig char. All right, hopefully all this makes sense. Let's do a console dot read line. And this is just to show you some of the flexibility of working with arrays. Let's run the application. And now we were able to write that whole that whole string backwards. All right. So um, that's pretty much it. There's a lot more that you can do in, with arrays. However, as we move through C sharp, you're going to find that your use of arrays will diminish over time and you'll start using something a little bit more elegant. Think of it as an array on steroids or maybe like super array, okay? It's going to be called a collection. There's a bunch of different types of collections and we'll learn about those near the very end of this series of lessons. Uh, but at any rate, that's how you work with arrays. Remember that you have to declare an array by giving it at the time of declaration its size, then you can access individual elements of array by using indexes into the array to access uh, or to set the values in a given element of an array. We can loop through elements of an array using a for or a for each uh, iteration statement. And we can even use some cool utility methods like array.reverse to swap all of the items in the array, or there's also ways to sort items and so on. Okay, so uh, let's continue on in the next lesson. We're doing great. See you there.